Hey, ever wondered what it would be like to take a beloved children's story that stood the test of time for more than a hundred years, suck out all of the passion, creative energy, timeless wonder and universal themes, and replace them with jarringly inappropriate 21st century identity politics, a bland cast of sterilised characters played by a series of tick boxes carefully chosen to appeal to modern audiences, and CGI that looks like it was rendered by a team of four minimum wage animators in their spare time at the weekends? Well, then you'll have a pretty good idea of what it's like to endure watch Peter Pan and Wendy on Disney Plus. Or to give it a more accurate title, Wendy, Tiger Lily, Tinker Bell and the Lost Diverse Individuals featuring special guest appearances from someone pretending to be Peter Pan. Honestly, this movie is exactly the kind of pointless, soulless, shameless dog shit that makes me genuinely despair for the future of humanity. It's two hours of utter tedium with absolutely none of the charm, likability, energy or timeless appeal of the animated film that was made 70 years ago. But honestly, what did you expect from a modern Disney remake of a classic story? It's not like they were going to do something really crazy like stick to the source material or anything. Anyway, let's take down a couple of lines of fairy dust. <sighs> oh yeah, that's the shit. <laughs> and I'll see you in Neverland. Or as I like to call it, jail. So the movie begins in Victorian London with young Wendy Darling getting ready to head off to boarding school to become a proper lady. Wendy's not exactly enthusiastic about growing up and becoming a woman and wants to spend her days sword fighting with her brothers instead. And naturally she's the best sword fighter ever because of course she has to be because the film wants us to believe that she can take on an entire ship full of pirates at the climax. Because as we all know, battering a couple of young kids with a wooden sword is totally the same as taking on a dozen fully grown, battle-hardened men. Physics! Luckily for her, diverse Tinkerbell hears her wish and sprinkles her with fairy dust so that she and her brothers can go with Peter Pan to Neverland where they never have to worry about growing up ever again. That's nice, but then they've only been there for like three minutes before they run into Captain Hook, who blows the shit out of them with a cannon. Now I'm no expert on 18th century naval artillery, but I'm pretty sure an explosive impact like this at point blank range would have completely obliterated this entire group of children. The flying shrapnel alone would have turned this movie into the Omaha beach scene from Saving Private Ryan. But ah, whatever, they all magically survive and get split up, and Wendy just so happens to run into the diverse lost individuals. Not the lost boys, mind you, because that kind of exclusionary language has got no place in modern storytelling. Lost boys! But you're not all boys. So? But I guess it doesn't really matter. Ugh. Yes, we get it, we're not supposed to care about the fact that you've just rewritten an integral part of the original story because the protagonist straight up tells us we're not supposed to care about it. Don't question it, just clap like the mindless seals that you are. This is also where we get to meet Tiger Lily, who for some reason is now the de facto leader of the diverse lost individuals. At least I assume she is, but she's got this weird habit of speaking to them in her native language, even though there's no indication that any of them can actually speak it, and she's fully capable of conversing in English anyway, so draw your own conclusions there. Actually, I kind of like the idea that none of them have got a fucking clue what she's talking about, but they're all too polite to call her out on it. It fits pretty well with the creative aesthetic of this movie now that I think about it. Anyway, the premise here is that Wendy's two brothers have been captured by Hook and his pirates, so a rescue mission is on the cards. And naturally, Wendy ends up doing most of the work, she saves Peter's life, and even gives him a good old-fashioned bitch slap afterwards to assert dominance over him. This is a modern remake, in case you are wondering. So they go back to Peter Pan's hideout to regroup and this is where we learn that Captain Hook was once a lost boy. <laughs> Sorry, diverse lost individual and Peter Pan's best friends. But then he got sad because he missed his mum or something so he left Neverland to go and find her but instead he got lost at sea and taken in by a group of pirates who raised him as one of their own. Sounds pretty nice to me to be fair. But when he eventually returned to Neverland he was all grown up and so Peter did the sensible thing and cut his fucking hand off and fed it to a crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> 
Jesus, who's even supposed to be the antagonist of this movie? Then Wendy sings a lullaby to her brothers to make them pass out so that she can go back to being a girl boss, but the singing unfortunately alerts Captain Hook to their location. Now, you might think that being a former diverse lost individual himself, Hook would already know the location of Peter's hideout and probably make that his first target, but I guess that kind of logic has got no place in this movie. So there's another fight scene and Peter gets slashed with a sword and falls like a hundred feet right through the fucking ground. Now you might think that this would shatter all the bones in his body and pulverise his internal organs, but then Tiger Lily shows up and smears some magical bullshit herbs on him and everything turns out to be just fine. What exactly is this movie, Black Panther? Anyway, so Hook's now taken Wendy and the others prisoner and forces her to walk the plank, but then Wendy imagines all the girl boss things that she's gonna do when she grows up and that gives her the power to fly and save the day. Notice how none of these images revolve around family or children and actually end with her dying alone and unloved, probably surrounded by empty wine bottles and cats that will slowly devour her decomposing corpse. You know, it's funny how an upper class Victorian girl's ideal of a perfect life corresponds almost exactly to that of a 21st century Hollywood scriptwriter. Must be coincidence, I guess. So Wendy saves Peter's life yet again, and then Peter apologises to Hook for being a total asshole, but then Hook falls off the ship anyway because he's got no happy memories to help him fly, probably as a result of all the childhood trauma inflicted on him by Peter. Then Wendy takes all the lost boys back to her house in London and just dumps them on her parents like she expects them to deal with the situation now. What the fuck do you think they're gonna do with a bunch of strange kids dressed like circus freaks that have suddenly invaded their home? I'll give you a hint, young lady, it's probably gonna involve a one way trip to the nearest workhouse for them and a severe beating for you. Probably should have stayed in Neverland to be honest. You know, it's become kind of a tragic meme at this point that any Disney remake of a classic animated movie is probably going to involve bending and bastardising the story and characters to make them fit with the obnoxious rules of modern identity politics. But honestly, it's hard to think of any story that's been more brutally compromised than Peter Pan. First and foremost, there's the characters, starting off with Wendy. The original Wendy was a feminine, compassionate and nurturing kind of character, a maternal influence on the lost boys who slowly helped them remember everything everything they'd lost back in the real world and realised that growing up is a natural and positive progression of life instead of something to be feared and fought against. Yeah, she wasn't exactly a kick-ass adventurer, but that wasn't her role in the story. What Wendy represented was growth, responsibility, change and maturity, the positive aspects of growing up, which ultimately made her the pivotal character in the entire narrative. But why have that kind of subtle, thought-provoking storytelling when we can turn her into the new and improved Wendy who fights men twice her size just as easily as ten-year-old boys, saves the day, rescues herself, bitch slaps Peter and whose only character arc is having to realise her own potential. It's the same trite, tedious, simplistic line of superficial female empowerment that gave us planks of wood like Ray Palpatine. Ray Skywalker. Palpatine. A character that's got all of Luke Skywalker's strengths and none of his weaknesses, who's better than him at everything, so naturally you have to like her more than you like him. Why don't you like her? Why are you questioning me? Why don't you just do what I tell you to do? Then there's Tinkerbell, who actually had a pretty complex and tense relationship with Peter and Wendy in the original story. In fact, she fucking hated Wendy so much that she ended up betraying her to Captain Hook. But of course, we're not allowed to show negative emotions like jealousy and insecurity intruding on the flawless supportive harmony of female relationships now, because as anyone who went through high school knows, adolescent girls are famous for their ability to get along and support each other. <laughs> The result is a Tinkerbell with absolutely no personality, goals or character arc of her own. She's just kind of there, ready to supply fairy dust when the plot needs some magic shit to happen. Tiger Lily is now a kick-ass girl boss who takes charge of the diverse lost individuals, saves the day on multiple occasions and generally dominates any situation she's in. She always knows exactly what to do, she's brave, confident, assertive and commanding and basically acts exactly like every other generic strong female female character in every other production for the past 10 years. For a company that's so big on diversity, they really don't reflect that in the personalities of their characters. 
And then there's Peter, who's now brooding, sullen, emotionally fragile, stricken with self-doubt and guilt, and easily dominated by the girls around him. The Peter from the animated movie was dangerous, unpredictable and self-absorbed, but he was also charismatic, wily, adventurous and intelligent, as quick with an insult as he was with a blade. He represented every aspect of boyish, adolescent energy turned up to 11, with all of the good and the bad that came with it. But this version of Peter is such an irritating, malicious shithead that I actually found myself rooting for Captain Hook after a while. And it doesn't help that he's played by an actor with all the presence, grit and charisma of a 10 year old girl. In fact, the only actor that delivers a half decent performance in this movie is Jude Law as Captain Hook, but even then he's been absolutely eviscerated by the script. The original Hook was a larger than life character, he was grandiose and theatrical, he dominated the screen and he absolutely relished playing the role of the evil pirate captain. He represented all of the negative aspects of adulthood. He was domineering, coarse, brutal, frightening and merciless. But just like the villains of so many other Disney remakes, there's been this weird attempt to reframe him as a tragically misunderstood anti-hero. A lost boy who strayed from Neverland to find his mother and got rejected by Peter when he tried to come home. But instead of making Hook sympathetic, it just makes Peter look like even more of an arsehole. And instead of giving us a lively, devious and colourful antagonist, we're left with a wet rag of a character with no clear purpose in the story. And I guess that's what really cuts to the heart of my criticism of this movie. Strip away all the tedious updates for modern audiences and the bullshit identity politics, and the movie still wouldn't be good anyway because its biggest problem is that it's so fucking boring. It adds nothing of value to the original story, does nothing to improve on the animated classic, and if anything, it actually tarnishes its legacy just by existing. The only thing it does add to is the rapidly growing list of shitty Disney remakes that deserve to be consigned to the ash heap of history and forgotten as quickly as possible. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.